If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. Final half hour of Daybreak this morning brought to you by Sarah Automotive on Highway 280 in Sylacauga. We're joined this morning by Heather Medine, who's a, a nurse at Coosa Valley Medical Center. And Heather, good morning to you. Good morning, Jimmy Good to Dale. have you with us today. And, uh, you know, not long ago, we lost one of the pillars at the hospital okay. due to COVID-19, a, a lady who was uh, just well thought of and well revered in our community for a long, long time. And we're reeling from that. And now then we've got another situation with a, a young lady who is an ER nurse at Coosa Valley Medical Center. Talk about that a little bit this morning. Who is she and what's going on with her? So Heather Gromis came, uh, came to work at Coosa Valley in December of 2018, and I met Heather. Um, she was a young nurse who um, was a tech in the ER prior to that. Excellent what she does. Um, she is married to Matt Gromis. They live... Um, pretty much between Sylacauga and Childersburg. Mm -hmm. So they're from here. Um, um, she has a baby girl named Maggie. Maggie's 18 months old. And after she had Maggie, uh, she started having different things start happening with her body that as a nurse that she noticed was not, uh, not normal. So she started having some checkups and what they found was a uh, adrenal gland tumor. And at this time, it had it had already grown up close to her inferior vena mm -hmm. cava around near her, you know, at her heart. So they were going to do surgery. And then she went for her COVID tests prior to the surgery and tested positive. So that postponed her removing the tumor for two more weeks. So um, after that, she goes back for her checkup again and the tumor has grown. So they can't do the surgery. So she goes in, they're going to start a treatment plan for her. She gets her port on um, one day. She goes home on a Friday afternoon, and then she's supposed to start treatments on that Monday. The Sunday night around 2 a.m., she had a, a brain bleed. Mm -hmm. um, and it was they enough to where she was immediately taken to UAB, where she still is. Um, and she has had two brain surgeries since then. Oh, wow. 32 years old. And she's 32 years old, wow. yes. And um, a fighter she is. Mm. Um, she worked in the ER up until we told her, don't come back. That's amazing. Do not come back in here and take germs home. You need to be well. <laughs> she was still going to work as long as she could. And our, her coworkers stepped up, all of us, mm -hmm. not me, at the whole hospital stepped mm -hmm. in and said, no, we're going to help her. What is this disease, Heather? LFS is a, is a rare gene that instead of, like, we have genes that, like, tell cancer no, this gene in their body doesn't tell them no. It, it likes them, so it mutates them. Mm -hmm. And so her grandfather passed away. He had it. He passed away of prostate cancer. Her mother um, had three different types of cancers. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I may be, it started thyroid and then she had colon cancer and then she eventually passed away of pancreatic cancer. The girls were young. I know the, the youngest sister was real young and she says, I don't remember a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and now Heather has the gene. Uh, her sister Amy does not have the gene. Um, they have an aunt that has it and then baby girl Maggie has it. Maggie gets scans every six months mm -hmm. to keep a check on her. And that's pretty much how they found Heather, is she was getting wow. checked as well. Um, she's at UAB now. She is at UAB now. And um, don't know when she's coming home, but the last update I got from her husband was that she was up in a chair yesterday for four whole hours. She walked, she ate, she's talking, and as far as deficits go, arms, legs, there's no deficits. Um, she's extremely tired. She has so much to live for, you know. She does. God. She has so much, wow. and so many. And she's a fighter. Mm -hmm. She is a fighter. So we just all kind of come together and came up with a bunch of different fundraisers. And our um, first fundraiser was the T-shirt that we have. Um, we we did these. You still got some of those available? I'm gonna bring some of these to our fundraiser. Okay. Whatever's left, what I, what I have left over right now, I have a few. 
I'm going to bring these to you. We're what having, does it say on the shirt? It says, um, Girl Miss Gang, and then her fight is our fight. Mm. And then the hashtag is CVMCER Gang. Wow. Because that ER is a tight knit group. We work together 12 hours a day, so they're just like family. They're our work families. Mm -hmm. And when they need something, we step in. It doesn't matter who it is. We lost Sweet Betty, and we don't plan to lose anymore. Yeah. We need Heather. What about the ducks? What are the, what the ducks are, okay, so we planned a little ride for her across Skyline, and we are all meeting at Piggly Wiggly on 21 tomorrow, um, Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's tomorrow at 1.30. It is $20 per vehicle, and when they pay us, we're going to give them a duck that says, thank you for your support, Matt, Heather, and Maggie G, and then it has her hashtags, Gromus Gang and LFS, and her fight is our fight. This is the receipts that we will mm -hmm. give people when they pay to ride in her ride tomorrow. We just doing it to help. This is, a, this is going to be a huge event. There's a lot of interest in this. There is a lot of people supposedly coming. It's going to be a beautiful day up mm -hmm. in the 80s. Um, the ride is as long as you are you have clearance under a vehicle, you can go. Um, no, no sedan. We wouldn't say, you know, take a sedan or a car, but a truck, any kind of truck or um, any four-wheel drive. It don't even have to be four-wheel drive. We'll make it across mm -hmm. there. Um, but anybody that would like to come out tomorrow, Piggly Wiggly will be there from 1 to one thirty. Can motorcycles be involved in it as well? We don't, I don't know if motorcycles can okay. pass. I've okay. never done this. Okay. Um, somebody else picked the, the route. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but um, we are going to do a motorcycle ride. Um, they're going to have some booths and tables and stuff set up out there tomorrow for people that want to come and just make a donation mm -hmm. to the family. They have a Venmo set up directly to them. And a cash app. If you, um, those are both Apple and Android apps that you can download on your phone. And if you want to do it anonymously, you can, or you can send them a message with the donation directly to them. So you're going to be meeting at Piggly Wiggly tomorrow. Piggly Wiggly tomorrow at 1:30, and that we're on 21. I mean, out here yeah, on 281. Okay. Um, Lifesaver's going to try to help us with the flyover right. because they're part of our family. Um, Sylacauga Fire is going to be with us. Sylacauga Ambulance is going to be with us. And Sylacauga PD is going to help us get through town. Our route is going to be from 280 down Fort Williams, take a left on Broadway down to the Lily and the police department and the library, make a right there, mm -hmm. we'll go out 41. So anybody that wants to be on the street, anybody that wants to watch us pass through town, please come out and support. We would like all the support we can get for Heather and her family right now. It's its just hard to believe that somebody her age yeah. and with her love of life having to go through this. You know, it's kind of unique that you and her both share the same first name. And yeah. uh, it was kind of hard in the ER for a while. <laughs> I guess so. Heather, yeah, Heather, it was Heather. like, <laughs> can I just be Medine and she can be Heather? Yeah. And so that's just how it had to work out for a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that her husband has not been able to work. being He, at, he is not. He's been with her. Um, they've, they've had lots of help with little Maggie um, as far as their parents go. Mm -hmm. um, his parents, her parents, her, her sister. Um, you know, we've had people come up and, you know, ask if they could pay daycare. Absolutely. Um, Matt called me the other day and asked me if I paid the utility bill. And I was like, no. And he said, somebody did. Thank you, Alabama Power, for whoever you let pay that for them. Yeah. From the bottom of their heart, they appreciate it. Yeah. So what is the treatment process for Heather? Right now, since the bleed, she has a six-week postponement in her cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we, we won't know any more about that until they get her healed from this. Um, but she does have six weeks. Yeah. And uh, 18-month-old child. Yes. Um, Maggie Elizabeth. Oh, wow. And uh, a mom at the peak of her life with a, with a less than two-year-old child, a husband that she loves. And... Uh, all of a sudden, it was all of a sudden. Yeah, she's stricken with this with this disease, and you talked about before we came on how this community had uh, rallied oh, wow. in support of this family. 
We have, I can tell you, 90% of the businesses in this town have donated stuff to uh, the mm -hmm. hospital and to her group to make raffle baskets. We will probably have enough stuff to raffle off 12 baskets to help that family from this town, Sulacaga, Childersburg, Chelsea, Coosa County, Alex City, can't thank them enough. Mm. Every one of you who donated something to her, I promise you they appreciate it from the bottom of their heart. Yeah. Uh, Coosa Valley ER uh, sees many, many emergency cases and, and a number of those are life and death situations. But when this hits home, it's a, it's a little bit different with, with a, a team member. It is very different with a team member. Um, like, like you said earlier, everybody had such a hard time with Miss Betty because she's been there so long. Yeah. She was the heart of our ER. I mean, she was our person. If anybody needed anything, you were hungry, Betty fed you. Mm -hmm. And Heather has Betty's heart. They're the same good as gold. I just can't say enough about it. Yeah. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm going to, you know, be pretty blunt about it. And Heather is a great person. And anybody that helps her, she might not can tell you right now, but when she wins this battle, she will most <coughs> definitely tell everybody thank you. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, uh, churches can get involved if they'd like. She, she does attend church, and her church is helping. Um, I don't want to say it that it's First Baptist, but I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that they've. there's so much going on. There's so many people trying to help. And um, so we're just, you know, we're letting people mm -hmm. do their thing. But we, you know, we have, Matt would, Matt has asked, you know, if people want to make donations, that they want you to make them to the Heather's Venmo and that Gromus gang so that they know who to thank. Because if, if it goes anywhere else, they don't know yeah. who's doing it. They want to know who to thank. Mm -hmm. So send them a card. Um, Is there a bank set up? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Any Heritage South Credit Union will take a donation okay. in her. She has a fund account. Mm -hmm. And you can go by any Heritage South location and make a donation into that account. Okay. Is there a, a particular contact person that if people have question about, they can... Uh, go on Facebook or call someone and well that, that's how we set that page up okay. and I and Heather and I set that up before she got sick so my phone number is on there you can direct me you can direct any messages contacts to myself Victoria Singleton Randall Littles Elizabeth Butts or anybody that works in the ER so at Coosa Valley we all keep up with her daily um, we kind of made a one contact person with her family um, with Matt so that he doesn't get 50,000 phone yeah. calls a day. So I've been getting an update from him either every night or every morning and I try to post that. But I wait on him because I want to make sure they have their yeah. families notified mm -hmm. of what's going on before Facebook world finds out. Yeah. So that's kind of how we've got it worked mm -hmm. out. But if I don't know the answer, I'll get somebody in touch mm -hmm. with you that will get you an answer. Of course, Heather's an RN at uh, Coosa Valley Medical Center uh, Emergency Department, just as Heather Medin is. And uh, we touched a little bit uh, briefly about Heather herself. Talk about her more as a person. Who is Heather Medin? Uh, Heather. Heather uh, Grimes. Yeah, sorry. Um, See, I get mixed up with the Heather. So. <laughs> everybody does. They all thought it was her at first. They were messaging her, and, and it was when she was first sick. Um, and she was so sweet about it. She would say, this is, please message Heather Medine, you know. Um, she just, she's just a strong person. When Even when she was real sick right before she went out of work, it, was, it wasn't like you could go to her and say, what can I do for you? Can I help you? Even if we saw, we could see, you know, something like she was struggling or she was mm -hmm. short of breath or anything like that. But you didn't dare ask her to help her because she was not going to have it. Strong-willed, great, um, when I tell you the good-hearted, sweet person, she doesn't have a, a mean word to say to anybody. Um, but she, like I said, you know, when she was trying to have Maggie, 
she was get you know she already knew about the gene um and so she she was trying to have Maggie and then they had Maggie and everything was fine you know she was right back to normal and when she started noticing things happening with her body that women notice sure that's when it was time she decided to get checked yeah. and that's when they they found the tumor yeah. so but as a person as a whole you will not meet anybody mm. with a with as good a heart as she has Hey, we got a big ride coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow. And uh, Heather, tell them about that before we go this morning. Okay, so we're meeting at 1.30 at the Piggly Wiggly on Highway 21. We're going to pull out at 3. Um, 81 degrees outside. It's going to be beautiful. Um, Lifesaver, Silicaga Fire, Silicaga Ambulance, and Silicaga Police Department, thank you so much for participating. They're going to all be with us because they are also a part of our work family at the ER. We um, we include them because if they're not helping us, they're not bringing us patients, um, we wouldn't them. have a job. Yeah. So um, we, we want to thank them as well for coming in and all of the businesses in town that's helping. I, I know that uh, Earlene's and the Lily both are going to put purple and green ribbons up and down Fort Williams and Broadway for Heather tomorrow. So if y'all want to call it Heather Gromas Day, we'll call it Heather Gromas Day. But we want this to be a big event. So please come out, even if you can't ride, and support this family right now. And, and uh, you know, sometimes there are fundraisers and you come to find out later that not all the funds raised go to that particular entity, but all the funds raised go to that family. Tomorrow at the ride, we're going to have her Venmo and her Cash App up on iPads or printed. We can't decide how we're going to do it. The people can go by and scan that and pay them directly. Mm -hmm. If they have cash, that's fine. We will take cash. Otherwise, it'll be a Venmo or a Cash App payment straight to the family. And that's how we're going to do it because they need it right now. Fantastic. And it, it, this is going to be a long haul for this family. And it we is. certainly want to uh, help and encourage uh, others to help as much as we can. And, if, you, you know, if you're somewhere in Alabama other than this local area, uh, you could participate, too, because we, we, this, is a, this is a strong state. It is. And, and we've got a strong state uh, in the medical workforce as well. And I know you want to speak to them this morning, too, and nurses and doctors in other parts of the state. Oh, of course. You know, we, we would we, we're not... We don't mind anybody's help and support for this family right now. This happens when the medical community has something. I feel like the medical community comes together mm -hmm. because we are a family. Um, whether we know each other or not, we're family. And when one person is in need, we're going to come through and help them. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like, I don't, Heather's only worked here as long, as far as I know. But everybody is starting to know her, and anybody that wants to know her or know anything about her can follow the Gromis Gang page on Facebook and in, yeah, Facebook, not Instagram, just Facebook. All right, what is it again now? Gromis, G R O M M E S Gang, G A N G. Okay. At um, on Facebook, please follow there. You'll get updates. You'll see a go under the events, all the events that we're having as far as. The ride and the the raffle will be on there soon, and then the donation, just donating, are, is on there as well. All right. Heather Medine, uh, RN at Coos Valley Medical Center uh, Hospital in Silica, where she is uh, in the ER, as well as uh, Heather uh, Gromies. And we want to remind you to be a part of this tomorrow, if you possibly can. And uh, Heather, thanks for coming by this morning, Sherry. Thank you for having us. More Daybreak right after you watch this.